I consider it a way of life, and it's basically integrated in everything I do. Being a Muslim means a lot to me in that I chose this religion. It wasn't a religion I was born into. It's a constant remembrance of not only your personal dedication to improving humanity, but also worshiping God. Islam is the best technology that i found to bring you into contact with God. Most religions um, take their name, they're named after a person, place, or thing. So Christians are named after Jesus Christ, who was a person or a prophet, peace be upon him, who walked the earth. Um, Jews are named after the land of Judea, it's a place. Buddhists are named after Buddha, and so on and so on. Uh, Islam is the only religion where the name of the faith is a state of being. Uh, the word Islam means submission to God, and the one who actually does the act of submission becomes the Muslim. Every action, every thought during the day, I mean, um, it kind of affects me in every way possible, from when I wake up in the morning, um, going to school. It helps me make better decisions, and it helps me be a better person. I think it's a way to bring a lot of structure into a really chaotic <laughs> kind of environment. There are a lot more similarities than there are differences, and that's something I think is important for Americans to know and for Christians to know or Jews to know. Islam is actually a continuation of you know where uh, Judaism and Christianity sort of that's how we see it left off that we take mm -hmm. we believe in all the prophets we take we believe in Jesus very highly as a prophet. When I first uh, became Muslim, um, my grandmother asked me, "So do you now you know pray to Allah?" And I'm like, "Well, yes, but you have to understand it's the same God that you know Christians and Jews pray to. It's, it, it's no different. It's one." Um, one single, all-powerful creator. Muslims accept Christians primarily as part and parcel of the Abrahamic tradition. But the two major differences are that uh, they accept Christ as a prophet, Muslims do, and not as a son of God. So there is not a divinity. His divinity as accepted in Christianity or some schools of Christianity are not accepted by Muslims. Secondly, Muslims do not accept the fact that it was crucified. Uh, the verse in the Quran is clear about that, that he was made, he was made to appear that he was crucified as he's taken up alive in heaven, that he has a second coming. So with that, with, uh, with the Jewish community, except Jews as people of the book, and matter of fact, the Muslim similarity with Judaism comes in the divine law. The Sharia is very much like the divine, uh, the Jewish Halakha. Dietary laws are similar, some of the other laws are very similar. So there is a degree of similarity between Judaism and Christianity and with Islam. Moses, may peace be upon him, you know, is mentioned in the Quran more than anybody else. And, um, you know, Jesus and, and, uh, and his mother, Mary, may peace be upon him, are both mentioned so many times in the Quran. So many of the, the um, events, you know, the biblical events, uh, the um, the building of the ark, you know, Noah <laughs> and his companions who escaped the flood through the ark and so forth. Even in practice, there are so many things that used to be part of Catholicism or part of Judaism that just in the 20th century have dropped off. And I think that's really important. And I even say now, a nun wears hijab, if you want to think about it that way. So even on the outside, there are so many similarities in terms of modesty, in terms of the values of Catholicism or Christianity or Judaism. They really do mesh with Islam, but I think secularism is what Islam differs from. So I was about eight years old, 
and our next door neighbor had a Bible study class and my mom signed us up. So I would go next door for a couple of hours, maybe once or twice a week, and we learned about all the prophets. And when we got to the fact that Jesus was God, it was a Christian tradition, I felt a little bit uneasy. And I remember asking people in my family questions about how Jesus is God. And it just didn't make much sense to me. There's things as a child growing up in Christianity that I didn't necessarily uh, understand or agree with, and decided to do my own uh, self uh, research and determine uh, why various religions had various tenets. I was about 20 years old, and I had gone from being Catholic to questioning. Jesus being God, to questioning God's existence altogether, to going through, you know, a rough period in my own life, and then to finally starting to try to make changes, and um, at that point, turning toward God, even though I didn't call it God, because I didn't believe in God. When I was in university, I started to learn about, um, you know, the existence of Islam through figures like Malcolm X and um, Cat Stevens and these other famous converts. So I became curious about it, and, you know, I became curious about, like, what was the power that could, you know, you had both these figures, you know, Malcolm X um, and, uh, and as I said, Cat Stevens were people who completely transformed their lives from one thing, you know, from being one kind of person to being a completely different person. So my curiosity was like, what power could have possibly accounted for this? I came across the teachings of Islam and taught that God was one and that everything else is created and that made a lot of sense to me. So I continued to study and eventually accepted Islam. I probably got exposed to Islam in college at the University of Cincinnati in about 19, uh, I would say 86, 87. Uh, predominantly on the Nation of Islam side at that time. Uh, however, there was things obviously that I could not agree with and uh, met some mainstream Muslims and decided to do further research on my own. When I first started studying Islam, everything made sense to me, and that was the first time that ever happened in regard to religion. Everything that I read was like, yeah, that makes sense. It just resonated within me. The thing that attracted me to Islam was that power for transformation. And I saw the need for it, especially at the time that I converted, I saw the need for that transformation in many different areas. I saw it like on a personal level. Um, I saw it in the people around me. I saw it in the society. And I was uh, living with eight exchange students from Malaysia uh, who, you know, all were uh, Muslim. And um, I just became very interested in just uh, their practices and um, religious beliefs and things of that nature. Um, so much so that the uh, next year I ended up uh, taking a class uh, from our, you know, religion studies department on, you know, uh, intro to Islam, basically. And uh, during that semester, I literally woke up one morning with the feeling that if I, you know, followed Islam, it would be a path to happiness. Interestingly enough, my sister converted, um, and uh, her, her husband and I, unbeknownst to one another, converted about the same time. Uh, and then a few years later, you know, out of uh, I guess her interest was piqued by why we had converted and things that we had told her about Islam, she converted to Islam as well. A lot of people say convert, but it's actually a revert because when you're born, you have no religion, you adapt what religion your family has. Learning about Islam actually made me a better, if you want to say, a better Christian or able to understand Christianity better than I had been before because knowing that Jesus was a prophet made me able to believe his message more than it had been before because I think a lot of the credibility was lost because I couldn't believe that he was good.